Hello and welcome back to another one of the set of videos that I'm making for my innovation final. Um, if you're here from my other video, I, I've already talked about the Pi hole on my Raspberry Pi. And now I'm going to discuss some more just basic software that I'm currently developing. It is a Discord bot for Discord written in Python programming language. And I'm not going to go into detail on Python programming or anything like that. If you want to know more about that, just Google it, I guess. That's how I've been learning how to code in Python. Uh, I haven't taken any actual classes. I have taken an introductory programming class, and it was very basic uh, computer logic at Lakeland. And I have self-taught myself in about, I think, a year. I think it's been a year. I started last summer, so just about a year, actually. I have been teaching myself how to program and the first actual bit of application that I have used from learning Python programming is developing a Discord bot in that language. So the general idea, well, I'll start off with we had, we have a Discord, and we have a lot of users that like to uh, spam things and put not so suitable for most audiences to look at, and things that are just generally annoying in Discord, and we would like to, our, our uh, issue was we didn't have a way to moderate that efficiently because the user could input a text or an image or whatever else that they wanted to faster than myself or Spencer, another admin on the Discord server, could delete them and get them kicked in time. It, it would take a while and be a bit of a mess. So we had the idea of why don't we just develop our own Discord bot that can help us do that. So that's that's where the general name Minimal comes from. It, that's the name of my bot. It's a minimal bot. It does very little, and it tries not to be as obtrusive as it can be. So it doesn't post very many things. I have a few applications to basically lay the groundwork and working with different uh, sub sub modules basically inside the Python library discord.py. Uh, so we developed it to do that very basic uh, text input output searches that I'm working on currently that aren't fully functioning. But the main purpose was to moderate the Discord efficiently and with simple commands. So starting off from the top, we are most of this won't make any sense to anybody at all unless you are programming both A in Python and B in Discord bots themselves. There's a general language and uh, understanding of the structure. If you know both of those, this will make complete sense to you. If you know one or the other, m you might start catching some things in uh, Python, like obviously uh, variables and different switch commands farther down here and cycling and stuff like that, knowing how what imports are and things like that. And if you're a Discord bot person, you understand what client is and you understand what tasks and loops and things like that are. So there's a mix of both of those. I'm not really going to get into too much detail of those either because that isn't the function of this video. But basically, it what it does is I'm not going to run it yet because I haven't put in the, uh, the prerequisites to get it to run. So instead of just doing a trial run to show you what it looks like, it isn't that exciting. So I'm going to run through some of the code to help explain what's actually happening when it does occur. So you're at the top. Um, status at start this bit at the very beginning all that's doing is displaying on the command prompt that comes up whenever I launch the bot it says that the bot is now online and gives you confirmation confirmation on the client side wherever you're hosting the discord bot from so that you know that it is running and it is running properly um, I do not currently have an error issue because if it doesn't start then it's just going to flash and close again, so the error does nothing, and I don't need to run an audit log on that. I could in the future, and I am learning about audit logging and uh, fault tolerance, basically, uh, which isn't currently in this build. But in the future, as I work more with the library, I will add those things in as they are needed. But it's functioning, and it has taken me like five and a half months to develop this, and I think I've hit a solid point of something that can actually be shared and is actually functioning as it should be without errors. So it starts and shows on the client side what is happening. Now this task right here, all that's happening is every 10 seconds it's going to cycle through and uh, 
change its activity. So in Discord, if you don't know, users can have activities underneath their username. So things like they are playing a game, it'll show what game they're playing. Or if you're watching a video, it could say that you've been watching Twitch for X amount of time. Or even if you're streaming, it'll show that you're streaming on Mixer or YouTube or Twitch for however long you are and has a link to that person's channel. Discord bots can do the exact same thing, but how I'm using it is to display the commands, which is this status variable here. And it's just a cycle of a list of different uh, keywords, different bits of text. So the help... Ignore this first uh, prefix. I have two different versions of the bot, and I'm currently using the double exclamation point as the uh, command prefix for whenever you ask the bot to do something. And I just haven't changed all of the different statuses to that as well because I'm currently running a test version of the bot so they don't mess up anything on my main bot that is currently functioning on our official Discord. So that is what that discrepancy is. They are effectively the same. But it's going through all the different commands that are possible or will eventually be added or potentially have been deleted, such as owner oh, doesn't actually exist, as you can see on the sidebar. I don't actually have a class for that. So I do have to do some cleanup. I'm not going to lie. There are some things i got to clean up. But it's it's all right. We'll, we're, we're, we're working our way there. So next thing. I have a few commands, which these are um, base level commands that regardless of anything else on the bot, these will function. All these three commands do are, uh, maybe that one, yeah, that one also works too. Technically, it is a command. All of those commands right there, all they are doing is loading and unloading cogs, which... Cogs are what Discord describes basically as a subclass or a subfunction of your bot, which is what's inside this cogs folder here. Everything inside this folder is a separate technical command that your bot can execute. And you could technically write out all of your commands like this in your base file of your bot. But that's not encouraged because, again, fault tolerance and keeping things separated so that if one thing breaks, it doesn't destroy the whole thing. It just doesn't let you do that command. That's the general purpose of separating it into cogs. But you do need to have some basic level commands on your uh, bot on the base file in order for things to function properly. So all three, all three of these are basically you're loading the cog. So I can load ban that command. I can load it in or I can unload it. Or I can reload it in case I've changed the file itself. If I've came into ban and I've came through and I've maybe added some more commands to it or tweaked something to make it uh, better. Like I added the has permissions and only people that have the permission to ban other people can actually use it. It checks for that. If I added that in, I can dynamically have that update. So I don't have to shut down the bot, restart the whole thing. I can dynamically work on my bot while it's still functioning its base values, I guess. So that's what those are. Your for loop here, this is just explaining how to work with the cogs, how to work with the files themselves. It has nothing to do with actual on Discord. It has more to do with the fact of things that are in this folder need to be put into the cache, which is a whole bunch of things that I also need to clear out because there are a lot of things that I don't need anymore. But you got to have a cache of all of your uh, different cogs for whatever reason. I'm not fully, I don't fully understand it myself because I haven't done a lot of research in it, but they said that you had to have that in there. So for dynamic purposes, obviously you don't need it, but to dynamically run all of this, you need to have this search in the directory in order for you to uh, dynamically use your cogs. So that's what that is. The final thing is, an error is occurring, such as a client is doing a double exclamation point and then puts in a command that doesn't exist in the current list of cogs. The client, or the, the bot itself, will send an error message right here, just invalid command use. I haven't done any more, haven't done any predictive or uh, trying to 
get the bot to understand that maybe you're looking for a certain cog, and so it's going to give you a few options that you may or may not have misspelled, which I'm currently working on getting that logic around my brain, which is still a bit confusing, to be honest, but I'm getting there, and it will be added eventually because this is an ongoing project that I'm going to be working on because I am interested in it. And then finally, your client.run is just now you're calling everything above. You're just turning on the bot effectively. And the your token here is actually, there is a token, it's an API key that you have to get from Discord themselves in order for your bot to connect to Discord. So I'm not going to show you that because then you can steal it and you can use my bot for whatever you want to use it for. And I guess I'm technically held liably accountable for it, even though I don't think there's anything bad that can, actually, can, can, can happen. I don't know, but I'm not going to show you what it is because I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to reset that either. So that's the general rundown of the code behind the bot. And as I've already explained, how cogs worth work, they're basically inside a class, and then you just build it out, and you give it a few things to listen. Like this bit, that's just telling the client-side prompt once again that the cog is loaded and it is working properly. And then this whole bit here is the actual command that's happening. And then the bottom bit is just adding the cog to the bot. And I don't think there's much else I really have to explain. That's pretty much all there is. Um, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and go to a demonstration on Discord and show you kind of the general idea of what is happening. All right. So I went ahead and I've just used the in inside of Visual Studio Code. There is a terminal to run your programs. That's what I'm doing. Instead of having a separate pop-out window, I've just decided to build it just have it launch inside of uh, Visual Studio Code. So this is effectively showing me that all of all of these commands are loaded and can run. Um, so I think we're just going to show the uh, easy easy options of example and clear. The example just shows it's a ping. Like you ping the bot, the bot sends back pong. It's a very simple backwards and forward transaction. And then clear is how you remove text currently the current functioning thing so we're gonna go ahead and jump over i'll just drag it in this is the discord channel we have plenty of other ones uh this is my official one where we actually are housing the bot minimal which is currently running on my server machine which is obviously a separate tower than the one i have but what we're looking at is elevator here so elevator is my test bot that i am running currently so Ignore anything that Minimal posts, because Minimal shouldn't be posting anything with our commands, even though they look like they're exactly the same thing cycling through. Elevator is the one we're using. So, to demonstrate, two exclamation points and ping will bring up Pong. Maybe not. Ah, as you can see, it did take a minute to run. That is simply because uh, Visual Studio Code runs a little bit slower than just having it on a main client, I think is the reason why. So that's why it took so long for that ping to happen. But, and as you can also see, there's another guy on here. Uh, Skynet's autistic cousin is actually Brad on our other Discord. I'm just glad nobody has any offensive names that I have to censor out. So I'm glad for that. But anyways, so now that he has posted something in there that is spam, this is a perfect time for me to showcase the clear command which clear without any extra variable after it any numeric value after it will clear 10 items including itself so it'll clear itself and nine items above it but all we want to do is we want to clear the one item above itself so one would clear itself two will clear itself and the one above it effectively mass deleting things we are currently working on a, a fix that allows the admin person to at a user and delete X amount of uh, uh, texts or pictures or posts to the server itself. And, I mean, Discord, whenever you kick somebody, I think it's supposed to delete everything, but it doesn't always. So we're working on a way to, 
effectively delete everything a single user is instead of deleting everything anybody has ever said, even though one person is spamming and nobody else is. So we are working on a way to pinpoint the people that are spamming things in order for that to work. So we're going to do another clear two, three, four, three, because that will delete everything that I've done. And that replaces everything back to normal. So that is the general idea of the Discord bot and the things that I have been working on. I believe I have one more test left to do. We'll go ahead and turn it off because we don't need it anymore. And that should be pretty much uh, all I have for this video. Um, if you look down below, I should have a GitHub link for the source code. I believe it is a bit outdated than what we're currently using because I have not updated my GitHub and I probably won't do it for this video either because it does take a little bit of tweaking to make sure my sensitive information isn't being shared. So that will not be a technical fully up-to-date Discord bot that I'm currently running, but it will be some source code pretty similar to what I'm already showing you. Some of the, the smaller details will still be in there versus not in there. That is okay. You'll get the general idea. But I believe that covers everything that I need to do as an official video for innovation. I have the paper left to write for all of the unfinished things or things that I'm currently still working on. And I don't think any of them even have a video to make about them. So it'll all just be written down. I will share that Google link in both of my video descriptions so that you can go and read them for yourselves. Anybody out there on the internet that is wanting to look this up at some point. That is where most of my documentation will be, is in the description down below. So, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. And feel free to shoot me an email or whatever and get a hold of me if you have any questions about things. I may or may not be able to answer. But, there you go. Have a good day, everybody.